Okay, we're back. We are live. Live. Live, live, live. Uh, I'm going to just have to have Eric announce that we're live each time. Because he does that so well. Why do you think he did it when I was on the kick? Because he's got that kind of... All right, let's, let's, let's do it officially. We are live! I am so okay, glad I have you know, my audio announcer. settings adjusted <laughs> so that you didn't even clip anything on my end. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Circulus, a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition homebrew campaign setting. I will be your DEM for the evening. I am Crash, and I am not in the World of Warcraft Alpha. With me today are several people who are, and some who are not. Let's start with Chris. Chris, who Hello. are you playing... And where can we find you online? Uh, I'll be playing both Galen Kaldor and Vexar and Silvor. <laughs> one's a bard, one's a ranger. And we're uh, going to have many conversations between the two of them. Oh, God. I'm sure. <laughs> that should be entertaining. Um, uh, no, right. Um, uh, <laughs> I, you can find me on Twitter at Akari underscore Mag, or you can find me on my podcast, which will have a new episode up today. Uh, at azrothctc.com And next on the list is Tom, who will not be joining us this evening, uh, but he would be playing Punk otherwise, our uh, much-loved gnome barbarian with a heart of gold. We don't know where he got it. <laughs> but he, he has... It's one of the things in the portable hole with little buddy the chicken. We don't know where he got that either. But we also have Jen. Jen, who are you playing and where can we find you? I am playing Meepo Chipclaw. She's a kobold sorcerer and she's a kid and she likes the color purple. Um, you can find me. Uh, my website is Book of Jen where all my stuff ends up at some point or at least most of it. And you can also find me on Twitch as Pain of Haiku. Fantastic. And we also have Matt. Matt, who are you playing? I will be playing Aristobulus Ravenscroft, Human Wizard. We also have Eric. Eric, who are you playing and where can we find you? Hello, everyone. I'm playing Obi Metalcaster. I am a dwarf cleric. Uh, I like long walks on the beach. Uh, <laughs> all those different things. Uh, you can catch me on Twitter at Synergy007. That's S-Y-N-R-G-Y. Uh, 007, and you can go to vote to kick dot com. Uh, we have a new episode, actually, a new series. Um, Open the Geek will be out shortly. Thank you. And and if I remember correctly, you called me about recording a commercial for Open the Geek that I can put at the end of these recordings that we're doing for this show. Correct. So we can Bumper. add more advertising for your stuff. <laughs> Bumper Bumper was, to do that. Bumper was completed. We just I just got to finish editing it. Keep Fantastic. Bumper. <laughs> That's okay. No one listens to these recordings, so it's not like the advertising does anything. I mean, oh, oh. wait. I said the quiet part out loud. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I got to stop doing that. And last but DM certainly not least, <laughs> last but certainly not least, returning from his epic adventure where he was shooting all the things in Battle Royale and doing four-player co-op in other games where you tried not to die versus zombies. Logan, Logan, who are you playing this evening? <clears throat> Best not talk about that. Uh, I am playing as Phoenix Day Dragonborn Paladin. And Wagon Affectionado. Yes. All the wagons. <laughs> that, that played an integral role in our last episode. Did, did you get a <laughs> yes, chance to listen to it? I listened to some when I heard that I was hanging off with stuff. You were hanging yes. off with a giant limp. <laughs> but then you got to fire a ballista. He yeah. did? That's not but, he, wagon, but he landed no. with a superhero pose. <laughs> but here's the thing. Where was the wagon? Um, the wagon? The giant Good metal Logan. wagon. Well, well let, let, let's get into the recap because some of this will be explained. Uh, there are no wagons anymore. Phoenix went on a rampage. <laughs> uh, you you were able the 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 employees of the Vicentessa Ravenscroft 
did try to do their best to hide all the wagons. They tried to hide them in the barn, which didn't work so well because that's one of the places where you can keep wagons. They tried painting signs that said, not a wagon, on the wagons. You didn't fall for that either. Um, <laughs> the, the reason why you ended up hanging upside down from a blimp was because they were keeping the blimp in the barn too, and in your mad rampage, you might have smashed a few things that shouldn't have been smashed, including some levers that activated, say, a trap door that opened up the entire roof and then launched the blimp and your foot was just in the wrong spot at the wrong time to get tangled up in one of the guy wires. I am so proud of my dragon boy. <laughs> what, what I try to do, I get very nervous when I am NPCing a player character because I really want to have them be what? The, the way that the player okay. wants them to be played and i'm so glad i was able to do that for you thank you for giving me that honor however no. there's, there's one slight thing you should have let me with the ballista bullet whatever that was, was slide bolt. yeah bolt hang i could have ride with the wagon while shooting the ballista there were no wagons left at that point We, we have total carnage. There are no wagons. <laughs> Only Zul. <laughs> oh, can I? Hello, can... welcome to Circulus, where we have more pop culture references from the '80s <laughs> than Ready Player One. That I still don't get because I am like 14. That's okay. I actually didn't get into Ready Player One. I bought the book but couldn't get through it. But never mind about that. I'm, re I'm listening to the audiobook right now. That, that's how I got it. And... I got the audiobook and I can't finish it. Yeah, I'm reading the book right now and I'm just not sure at all. <laughs> if, if, if I can't, if I don't have buy-in with the main character, it, it falls flat. And for some reason, it's just not working for me. But never mind. This is not a book review podcast. <laughs> this is a Dungeons and Dragons game. We, so we, book review should, podcast. Yeah. we could, but we'd all have to read the same book. Um yeah, that's true. We, we'll, we'll all review different books. And, and, but no, really, in Chapter 3, the plot really comes together. What book are you reading? That doesn't come true at all in mine. Never mind. <laughs> um, does comic book count? Yeah. Why not? Their literature. Yeah. But <laughs> let's move on. So there was this epic battle. An adamantine dirigible, or adamantite. I forget exactly what it's called in Dungeons & Dragons, but basically a really powerful almost indestructible metal the dirigible was made out of it thanks to galen th that it was his life's work and he did a remarkable job with it except when it crashed and burned um the first yeah. time ari managed to keep it from crashing and burning this time and during the battle he Misty stepped down to the ground because he decided it would be a great idea to fight Frost Giants face-to-face -face, as opposed to from a height advantage, uh, leaving Fenix to man the ballista. Fenix was convinced by Thaba, and the rest of the party didn't notice because they weren't there to see it. He was convinced by Thaba that he missed a wagon and he should go down to take care of that wagon quickly. Um, metagaming here, you fail to save against a charm spell. Um, so he took the quickest route to the wagon, which was straight down. Um, survived the fall. It wasn't that far. He left a small crater. Realized when he landed that he'd done a really bad thing. But then managed to heal Obame at the last minute. Seems like me. So, all the frost giants are dead. Thava, we're assuming, escaped on the adamantine dirigible. You have a basic heading of which way they went, or which way she went, but she could have changed direction as soon as she was out of sight. There was some cloud cover in the air, so she could have gone up through there and then been untraceable. 
And there is a, for want of a better word, a debriefing afterwards. Um, because I'm sure that Ari has some questions for his mom about some of the spells that she managed to cast when he didn't even know that she was capable of casting spells. Yes, he is very interested in that. Well, she picks up a thing here or there. Uh, that she picked up more than one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she did. Uh, there, there, there was one particular spell that she used at the end, which basically fires bre beams of radiant sunlight at the target. And um, she, and I misspoke in the recording from last time, I, I, she incinerated one of the frost giants from the knees up. They don't exist anymore. It's basically just a pair of boots with smoke coming out of the top of them. Um, but she she decided that she needed to know that spell after she had some business dealings with a vampire that she she didn't care to have any more business dealings with again. They, she didn't know they were a vampire at the time, and she felt uh, kind of upset that she was in a situation like that. So she decided that she would be able to do something about it the following time. But she doesn't give you a lot of straight answers about where she received her training. That's okay, but the fact that she has it intrigues him. And he is now at least somewhat more aware. Or so It wasn't very clear to Ari where the magical genes came from. Now it is very clear where they came from. Well, she does have servants do the laundry for her. Yeah. Um, so she do, and, and they tend to buy the clothing for her, too. So she doesn't always know where it comes from. Yeah. <laughs> Magical um, jeans. <laughs> thank you. I'm glad someone got the reference. Yeah, it took me a minute. <laughs> I, or everyone else got it, and they were like, that's not funny. If I laugh, I'd encourage him. I'm not <laughs> encouraging him. I'm not encouraging him. Yes, that's more like it. <laughs> <laughs> that too that yeah. too um now you actually do have very few servants um in the villa at this point most of them at the point that you arrived were in league with thava or hired by thava and they sort of they booked it to, to use a phrase that chris uses a lot um shortly after Thaba decided to make her getaway also, uh, for various reasons. Um, some of them do remain. Most of them were very low ranking to begin with, uh, below Thaba's notice in some cases. Melvin stuck around. Um, he, he's, he, he's been a servant there for a while, and he's one of the higher ranking ones now, which is totally taking him by surprise. <laughs> And he's much more nervous now that he's one of the ones in charge of the other servants than he ever was before when he was just, you know, doing what he was told. Right. But, you know, good for Melvin, character development. Yeah. In, in another 50,000 episodes, you'll be fighting dragons with him or something. Yay! <laughs> Perhaps. Probably yeah, not. The, Probably not. The mother coming out and doing that was quite unseen. I didn't. I didn't think that was going to be a thing, and that kind of made Obeim, Obeim Now that he's reflecting on it, kind of, uh, kind of uneasy. Just something about his uneasy thing. Well, make no mistake, um, she's still incredibly racist. I agree. A a and in your conversations <laughs> with her, she makes a few remarks where she doesn't even think anything of it. She th she thinks she's being polite, but. She's definitely not saying polite things, and I'm not going to go into the details for it. But but she's yeah. she's still she's very protective of her family, but that doesn't mean that she is an incredibly nice or progressive person. Let's put it that way. Just All can't right. shake, just can't just shake this feeling about her though. It really <laughs> it's really get really got his his something about her because. You know, Obam's good at insight. Something about her, just he does not, he doesn't get. But you can't shake this feeling deep inside of you? <laughs> yeah, I can't fight this feeling anymore. <laughs> God damn it. We are, we are horrible, horrible people. We are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. Oh, it's well, good because I still have no idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's I would good. say you, you'll That's understand really when you're older, but no, you won't because you'll have no, to just go back won't. and. No, no, but, but here's the thing Logan, you are in a better place to understand this than most generations have in understanding the previous generation because everything that we grew up with is being rebooted now. Yeah. Pretty much. That is yeah. Uh, on a song too. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So, so eventually you will be Captain America going, I got that reference. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's weird. usually me when y'all talk about like games and movies I haven't seen yet. <laughs> so going, I don't know. <laughs> well, that too. Yeah. Once in a while right. I get the reference. Today, today has been good. So to finish off Bertha's <laughs> plot line for um for Tom um she and the Vicentessa do come to an arrangement uh, she's going to stop pressuring the dwarves to deliver more ore that they can't deliver the main reason she wanted all of that metal and ore to begin with uh and was being very um inflexible about it was because of the dealing she had with Thava's employer and that deal is no longer viable considering they <laughs> tried to kill her son. Yeah, that's so, not a good thing. That, that yeah. tends to be a deal breaker in, in most situations. Yeah, yeah. Ari's not necessarily nah. taking it personally, but, uh, you know, I could see where his mother might. <laughs> yeah. well, We've already you did had have to roll a death Baba, saver, too. Could, yeah, I did. <laughs> I did, and, and that, that's a mark on my soul, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Speaking of marks on your soul, her. you don't feel any different at all after using the amulet. No, I only had to use it once, and I, I hope it wasn't especially damning, <laughs> as it were, uh, but we'll find that out later, I'm sure. Well, give me an Arcana check. Uh, well, that I'm actually good at. Uh, so 13 and 10 is 23. All right, well, you do a lot of introspection, and you don't see anything has changed after using the amulet. It it was quite powerful. It, it doubled the damage that you would have otherwise dealt to the frost giant that you used it on. Um, heaven knows how much damage you'd have done if you hadn't been using a cantrip or if you had crit. Right. Or if you stayed in the darn thing and started getting you know, higher ground <laughs> and shooting yeah. stuff. But, you know, we won't go and that and be bitter because hey, I hey, kill everybody. I got lucky with the ballista <laughs> once. I wasn't counting on that twice. <laughs> and Phoenix was up there to keep firing the ballista. Which was something that could totally be done as an NPC, and I wouldn't have to make yeah. a lot of life-changing well, decisions I for figured him. Vex might have had, or, or Phoenix had maybe slightly more experience with such items than I did. <laughs> That's fine. You owe I me have experience you owe me with everything, Eli. That's okay. You owe Especially me some adult diapers. Object. Yeah. He owes all of us some adult diapers. Yeah. Okay. On that note, so, so Bertha's dealings are done, and she heads off into the sunset, then realizes she's going the wrong way, turns around and comes back the other way. <laughs> um, she's, she's been here for, for quite a while. Uh. Galen. Hello. What would you like to do? Galen wants to go off and try and find his dirigible now that he knows that it's still intact and has been stolen by some crazy woman that he knows nothing about. I'm assuming during the debriefing you find out that she's probably a dragonborn. Yes. Yeah, and we could give her we could give him that much. And a spellcaster of no small talent. Galen, being uh, the arrogant little gnome that he is, has no doubt that her power is no match for the great Galen Galdor. Okay, well, Galen has a quest. Dun, dun, dun. Find his dirigible. <laughs> Alright, well, the dirigible did head off to the west, so... You do ride off into the sunset. And you don't find yourself turning around and going back the other way. Uh, the rest of the party, however, I am assuming at this point 
that you are thinking you should be heading back to Coombridge? That tends to be your port of call for the most part? Uh, that is Ari's plan. Uh, at a minimum, we are starting to build a base of operations there. Uh, if nothing else, we have our farm that we now have to enjoy, or at least working on. Um, so that's where he's going to start. He at least has to probably at least return there to talk to Lord Idris, tell him that the agreement has been delivered and things should start moving very soon. Um, we've had a brief little who's the Wetsits with uh, Thava. Uh, but that has been resolved, and I believe my mother and her uh, her team or her folks will start getting things done as soon as possible. And they even cobbled together uh, what's left of a wagon uh, <laughs> with, with, with the first payment for uh, the magical blue roses included. Uh, Lo uh, Fenix, Fenix, rather, not Logan. Um, there, there is no Logan, only Fenix. Um, <laughs> Fenix is given strict instructions by the Cartwright to not go near the wagon. Just not. Don't even, uh, don't even look at it. Ari will ask him as a personal don't even, favor. <laughs> don't even please, think about it. I clench leave by, this one alone. <laughs> I clench my fist at the growl. Okay, so give me a charisma save. You guys are going to love this one. <laughs> you ought to be decent at it. I don't know if I get him behind. If we get him behind charisma. Oh, no. It's like a 23. Damn. Damn. That's, that's pretty good. So the, this Cartwright... Um, looks very intimidating in the way that um, a grandparent can be intimidating. It's, it's not about physical presence. It's about emotional presence and tone of voice and stature. Um, but it just all washes over Phoenix like it's not even there. So you you are not intimidated at all by this person. It's not that yeah. The, that that wagon isn't that you know perfect. It's not shiny. It's not sparkling. It's not any 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 jewels on it. So you only kill pretty wagons. <laughs> yes. I don't know if that's more messed up or not. Are you... <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm Are judging you're... this wagon from its looks. It looks disgusting. Ari, your mom leans over to you and says. If he breaks this wagon, make him carry the gold himself all the way to Coombridge. <laughs> oh, hey! Hey! If you make him carry the gold, you'll never see it again. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, so, I would require strength checks to make sure he was able to carry it well. Coombridge is a long ways away. You yes. will roll a one eventually. <laughs> <laughs> days, days away. Days. Be nice to it, Phoenix. Wagon Church, here I come. <laughs> Your wagon church is already being built, or, well, kind sort of. of. Yeah, kind of, sort of. <laughs> they they have a start. If if they don't keep <laughs> having of... strange children stealing from them. Oh it's wait, no, twigs. you don't know. It was they were they were robbed by children. All right, so we are going to fast forward to your arrival in Coombridge uh, because I really don't want to do another two sessions of traveling through the woods again. Um, it, it's relatively uneventful, um, except for every time the Phoenix looks at the wagon side-eyed and everyone else just stiffens. <laughs> <laughs> Obame makes great use of his mending spell. To keep the wagon moving. <laughs> it is necessary. Uh, it was repaired as much as it could be, but there there are some structural issues. Um, the, the, the axles, both axles are bent. I can fix so. that. No. No, <laughs> no you <laughs> can't. You cannot. You're being just fine. Oh, I love this game so much. 
Washy washy go smashy smash. <laughs> All right. So when when you go through Gore's Gate, which as you know is the last town you go through before you end up going through the swamp known as the Gores to get to Kumridge Keep. Uh, you see that it has been partially rebuilt. There are several houses standing uh, with smoke coming out of the chimneys. There, there's some leaves that are starting to turn orange, by the way. We are getting into late summer, early fall, and this time of year. Meepo, in particular, uh, you feel that you think you can... S now, it, it's hard to say for sure, because you live most of your life totally underground. But... With how you judge time, you are fairly certain that you can stop telling people that you're four. You think you're five now. Yay. So you are <laughs> you are almost a full grown kobold. Almost? Yeah. Now I get to be an annoying teenage kobold. Yeah. Man, I'm old. You can start wearing all black and, mm -hmm. and um, buying all your clothing from Hot Topic. Uh -huh. and, and listening to things like Claire's Boutique and yeah, yeah. Oh, listening to God, my chemical we're romance a, we're gonna have a rebellious <laughs> cool world on our hands <laughs> she's gonna listen to metal <laughs> and she knows <laughs> press digitation uh huh and, and baby metal. fire and lightning so yeah. this will be fun <clears throat> and Fennis goes around saying that he's her father so um can you control your child probably not <laughs> <laughs> you can try <laughs> They're lawful evil. Mm -hmm. Well, the children are technically chaotic neutral, but that's another story entirely. All children are chaotic neutral. Every time right. she kills something big, I'm gonna say, "That's my child." <laughs> <laughs> that's my girl. My girl. <laughs> right. So you you head through the gores. You don't even see any zombies in the gores. They've been doing a pretty good job this summer of trying to clear out as much of it as they can. Every now and then, one probably turns up still because it is a swamp. But it's it's not an issue anymore for the most part. Uh, when you get to Coom the town of Coomridge Keep, uh, there are a lot of black banners that are hanging in various places of prominence. Uh, some of them are set up by local residents, but some of them look much more official. What would you like to do? Um, Obam needs to go to, uh, to church and pray before he heads uh, to rest. Um, this experience in the past kind of, again, it's really not not selling with him well, so he needs to calm himself down a little bit, pray. He also needs to be able to uh, check out the different type of um, healing he can do himself to maybe improve on his thoughts. He doesn't like it when he's not, when he's underperforming, even though the damage is good, he wants to improve himself all the time. So that's where he's going to head. All right. And you do have, I'm trying to remember, uh, you're a cleric of Ilmater? Correct. Okay. And there is a temple to Ilmater in town. Uh, you are yeah. one of the founding members of it. Um, they, they pretty much relied on your teachings for it creating this particular church or temple and you are it, it is quite possible that you are the most powerful cleric in the kingdom right now uh, considering that most of the churches and temples are for deities that kind of died <laughs> or were killed off by an ancient green dragon so Guess who's not answering spells anymore? Um, <laughs> but your god still answers spells, still answers prayers. Uh, and you're off going on adventures while everyone's not. So uh, you can do that. Anyone else? I'm the most powerful wagon boy. <laughs> That's not a thing. Yes, it, is. <laughs> it can be. Make a scroll. Uh, you would need a wish spell for that. That's a level nine spell. I ain't touching that spell. Get away from me. I will dispel the hell out of it real quick. Oh, you can't dispel spell. a wish. That's the problem. Yeah. I wish for this game to be over. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right, well, you do have a local congregation as well 
that has been trying to build a temple just outside of town. Do you want to go see them? I'll talk to them, yes. Okay. So you go and see them, and you see that they have acquired additional help to the point where they have a definite foundation in place. And from the looks of it, they've been doing some excavation work also. So there's parts of your temple that they're building to Bahamut um, that are underground that you cannot see. But the amount of earth that's been moved and placed above ground tells you that they've been digging stuff out um, rather industriously in the month or so that you've been gone. Good work. And give me... A perception check. It's funny because I hear the dash roll in the background. <laughs> <laughs> well, that dash roll was a three. Oh, All right. No. So, everything I just told you. Wait, what? Um, no, it was a three. I'm kidding. Okay. Uh, so everything that I told you was a, a gimme where you could see this from some distance away as you're arriving, uh, but you don't see any sign of how they managed to accomplish this. Uh, when you left, there was a handful of acolytes, but the main tool they had for building purposes was a plank that they were using as a shovel because their actual shovel had been stolen. But here you go. They've got the beginning of a structure set up. They used a dang wish spell. <laughs> I assure you, if they used a wish spell, you'd see a little bit more than a foundation. <laughs> <laughs> I would see a whole entire army. Wagons. To be honest, I was looking at the wish spell recently, and for 5th edition, they've nerfed it a bit. Um, You can create stuff with it, just by wishing for it, but it's it's got to be like 25,000 gold or less. And the total cost for this temple that you want is going to be more than that. So they would have been able to wish part of it into, into being, but not all of it. I How wish for more money. <laughs> I wish work. for more wishes. Doesn't work. But can't use it multiple times. You could cast it every day, actually. Yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll cast for a small one of million gold. It's, it's unfortunately not a paladin Ninth spell. Ninth level spell as well. Uh... Sorry. All right. So, um, the acolytes see you coming, and they are very happy to see you. And they start asking you a bunch of questions, you know, petitions, guidance. He stole my sandwich. No, it was my sandwich. My name was on it. Everything that you would expect to hear from a bunch of kids when their parent comes home, basically. <laughs> Is there anything you want to talk to them about? I'm, I'm just going to tell them how's the construction going. Oh, it's coming along swimmingly. Um, e ever since your, your little friends started helping us. Uh, little friends? Little friends, okay. Yes, um, little friends, like, like, like the, 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 you, you called her your daughter? Uh... Sweet. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Look at that, Cameron, or not Cameron, Logan, you got a whole following. I, I at that am moment. A god. At that moment, you see a kobold stick their head out of one of the tunnels. Oh. And they wave to you. They they <clears throat> dump a, a wagon full of dirt. It's a, it's like a wheelbarrow, not, not a full wagon. Let me rephrase. <laughs> and then they go back into the tunnel. No, no. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, like, yeah, that's cool. And then I turn around and I just cry a little bit. He's so sad. No, this is all I've ever happy. wanted. He's happy. <laughs> <laughs> What's everyone else doing? Ari will head to uh, visit Lord Idris uh, and deliver the uh, 
gold and uh, explain to him the contract will start being fulfilled and he wishes uh, him kind of good luck in the uh, in business dealings with my mother. Um, should he need to get in contact, uh, a sending spell can usually reach her. Um, and that might be worthwhile, or if he wants, he can have me do the sending. She might be more receptive to messages from me if he needs uh, a quick communication to her. Uh, you can have a conference call or something. Yeah, a telepathic conference call. <laughs> if that thing doesn't exist, you're, you are pretty sure that the Idris family could probably build it. <laughs> yeah. At this point. Uh, if they couldn't, Fiddle Punch could. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so... There'll be ways to work things out, but um, everything is now getting started. The balls are rolling. Trains are moving. Uh, tracks are being laid. Oh, wait. Wrong metaphor. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Funny you should say that, but never mind. Yeah. <laughs> things are going along swimmingly, so everything can begin. Okay. Uh, well, I'm not going to ask you to give me a perception check because you are wearing a robe of eyes. Uh -huh. and it's just not worth it at this point. Um, but the somber drapery that you saw in the town is doubly so in here. And as you're explaining all, all of this, um, Lord Idris is listening to you and acknowledging what you're saying at the right moments, but he is very obviously distracted. What happened? My father's dying. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, sir. So am I. How old is he? 65. Hmm. Impressive. Um, you have my deepest sympathies. Um, if there's anything I could do to make your grief easier. Oh, wait, he's a dying, not dead. Sorry. <laughs> Back up. <laughs> uh, I'm well, sorry, too. He, he's refusing to see any healers. Why? I mean, it's his business, I suppose, but... And members of my family tend to live a lot longer than 65. It, it, this came on very fast. He was He was healthy one day and bedridden the next this is this is not natural this is not normal uh, part of me wants to just think that he's my father so of course i'm going to assume that this isn't right when it's natural causes but i don't know why he doesn't want a cleric to see him if it's some kind of disease, they'd be able to cure it. Um, perhaps Obame may be of assistance. I don't know. I mean, he is a, he's a cleric, but he's not from one of the local deities. So maybe he might be willing to see someone like Obame? He's refused everyone else. Hmm. Can't hurt to ask. It hurts when he says no. I understand. But I see what you're saying. Yeah. I understand. Um, that said, the man does sleep from time to time, does he not? You know, I don't think he sleeps much. Maybe that's the problem, or is that the disease? It's a family trait. Ah. Um, well, if he doesn't want to be seen, I mean, it is his choice, but it is unusual. I will say that. Um, could there be outside influence? If there is, it's not something I can detect. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be magical. Although I can't imagine anything else affecting him. Well, my areas of expertise are 
as you are no doubt aware, rather specialized. Indeed. Uh, most of us actually, most wizards become a little specialized in an area of magic. Mine is going to be, or is, divination. I'm not entirely as skilled as you or others, but perhaps I can discern what secrets he may be holding. After all, I'm not a priest. I am happy for any help you are willing to give. Well, the belt, the only thing I can think to start with uh, would be at least to perhaps probe his mind. Now, without his permission, that's a lot more difficult. Um, I would say probably impossible. Yeah. But at least it might be worth a talk. Uh, I might, and he kind of indicates the robe. This has properties that can let me see things that aren't often immediately visible upon our plane of existence. I can see into the ethereal plane. And if there's anything that may be hiding there nearby him, perhaps influencing him, I should be able to spot it. If there is anything in the ethereal plane or astral plane nearby, I would have seen it. Okay. Then perhaps just talking to me may do some good. After all, I am not a priest. Again, I'm willing to accept any help you want to offer. And it, it is, uh, you, you are getting the sense from this that he... He's tried it he, all. Yeah, he, he's worn down. He's out of options. He, he's struggling with accepting the inevitable, but not wanting right. to. Yeah, yeah, I figured that. Oh, he has some insight, so. Um, all right. Uh, when would be a good time to meet up with him? Whenever is good for you. I am currently unengaged at the moment, so why not take advantage of the time now? Right this way. Oh, and um, Meepo, are you here as well? She oh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> it's up for her. Along. Yeah. And the question then is, did you stick with Ari when he came in, or did you immediately head off and look for your friend? Oh, I went to go find my friend, of course. Okay. Ellie Idris. Hmm. Um, the youngest of the Lord Idris's children. Uh, she is six years old. So she's just a bit older than you, but... Hmm. A bit less mature than you in some ways because kobolds age a bit more rapidly. Um, and also a sorceress. Yes. Or sorcerer. Both terms are acceptable. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, you find her, but she doesn't seem to be really interested in playing right now. Oh, what's the matter? Grandpa's dying. Oh, that's not good. Maybe somebody can help him, get him better. Maybe. And while you're talking, she's using prestidigitation to um, create um, rubber balls that she's throwing against the wall and bouncing. But she's not aiming for this, so they're just flying off and hitting other things in the room knocking stuff off the shelves. Then she makes another <laughs> one and she throws it again. It bounces off in another random direction. That's a neat trick. I want to try too. I'll start okay. joining in and now we have twice as... There are now three broken windows in her bedroom. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Only one of them is from you. She broke the first two already. The the local servants are, are just waiting for her to finish before they come in and fix it because it's, it's not worth it to fix it over and over again. <laughs> Truth be told, her dad is probably going to make her fix it herself with mending or something. All right. Um, 
Is there anyone else doing something? We haven't talked to Vex yet. Nope. Vex, what have you been doing? You, you've had enough time. You've finished your bow. Mm -hmm. So I what also, have you been doing? I'm also assuming that I've been kind of figuring out how to run a farm. Uh, there has been a learning curve. Uh, you did learn early on that um, an enchanted suit of armor filled with fire is not the best farmhand to give a bale of hay to no. to feed the sheep. The boys are on patrol duty. <laughs> um, they, uh, Jackson is more than happy to just do patrol duty. Ross keeps trying to find ways to help. Um, he was actually very good at chopping firewood, uh, once he stopped using his sword of fire mm -hmm. to chop the wood and used a regular <laughs> axe, uh, he was able to chop a lot of firewood because they don't tend to get tired, so he did a great job with that. Um, he also loves playing with Shepard because, of course, he does. Uh, there was one point where... Uh, Shepard came over to you and he was holding Ross's arm. Like, like he found a stick that he thought you would like. Oh, God. <laughs> yep. And Ross comes over and he looks kind of sheepish. He's like, we were playing fetch, but he really only plays fetch with you, I guess. <laughs> may, may I have my arm back? I give him the arm back. He throws it and Shepard goes to get it again. <laughs> <laughs> and there's at least one point where you're not sure if you dreamt it or not, but you are you think you saw Shepard wearing a makeshift saddle with Mr. Fluffy Tail riding on top. With the stuff that's going on in this place, I have no doubt I did not dream it. <laughs> You're not entirely sure, but you think Mr. Fluffy Tail the Squirrel was also holding a stick like it was um, a jousting <laughs> apparatus. A jousting lan lance. Yeah, he was lance. He had a lance. Okay. <laughs> Ross finds ways to amuse himself on the farm. Uh, and Punk, for his part, um, now. He was into buying the farm also. He enjoys it. Uh, sometimes he hangs out in the basement with the door locked and you're not allowed down there for one reason or another. Um, he often goes out for his weekly poker game. Um, four or five times a week he goes out for his weekly poker game. <laughs> um Clear Spring is also being rebuilt, and one of the things that they've built in Clear Spring happens to be a tavern, um, and it is within walking distance if you hustle. Uh, so you think he might have spent some of his time going there. I'm giving him inspiration to do the hustle. <laughs> and you're giving me cringes. I hate you, and I love this game so much. Um and I lost my train of thought. Sorry. Uh, now, in, in your managing of the farm, uh, you did notice mm -hmm. some signs that goblins had been in the area, specifically rather small goblins, like goblin children. They've been trying to not be seen. Um, you see evidence that they tried to cover their tracks in some places, but sometimes the attempt to cover your tracks are more obvious than if you had just not tried to cover your tracks. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't notice anything missing on the farm that you can't attribute to Ponk taking it um, or something going horribly wrong with Ross or Jackson. Um, so they don't seem to have done anything, but you know they're in the area. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, Ari. Yes. We will get to meet, well, we'll meet again. Uh, Fervid? Yes, Fervid Idris. 
Perfect. Um, father of Lord Ardent Idris the uh, Third. You have met him before. You have worked with him. You you assisted with their research. Yep. Of course, it was on a level where you were um, like the first day grad student. Yeah. Um, talking to a bunch of PhDs. One of them was a Nobel laureate. <laughs> I'm fetching books and coffee. <laughs> your, your voice might have cracked once or twice, but you'll never yeah. tell. Yeah. Uh, but you you know from your interactions with him, this is a brilliant man. Um, and he, even for, uh, now now sixty five isn't that old in in modern day, or right. in a fantasy world where you have clerics that can cast high level healing spells. Um, cure disease is a wonderful spell. Mm -hmm. um, but um, even with that said, he looked to be in the prime of his life at 65. He he looked good at 65. There are people who are 30 years old that didn't look as good as he did right. over 60. Um, but um, Ardent takes you to uh, Fervid's chambers. Um, and announces your presence. The first thing that he said that you hear from inside is, it's not another cleric, is it? No, father, it's not a cleric. All right. Ardent opens the door, lets you in, says, if you need anything, I'll be outside. He closes the door well. behind him. You you see the resemblance, yeah. Between they look father and son. No, no, you see no. a resemblance between the person on the bed and the person you knew as fervid Idris. Right. But add maybe thirty years, forty years. Oof. Hard. Looking years. rough. He's looking yeah. rough. He he looks like he's wasting away. There's a lot of muscle mass that's been lost. Um, a lot of wrinkles. Where there aren't wrinkles, the skin is stretched against the the what muscle is left and the bone. You're you're Aristobulus, aren't you? I am indeed, sir. I remember you. I'm Bright glad. boy. Thank you. So go far. I hope to someday perhaps follow in you and Lord Arden's footsteps, perhaps, in your knowledge of arcane matters. You'll probably get there. You have a good head on your shoulders. I tend to think I do. It, it has served me tolerably well these last few years, so long as I don't lose it. Yeah, a few people actively tried to remove it recently, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you held on pretty tight. Thought it would look better somewhere else, <laughs> or in a in a different shape. Yeah, or state of matter. <laughs> it was mostly solid. They they preferred liquid. Yeah, um, they, a, little, a, little, a little a little bit of chunks here and there, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, um, had, I took a took a rather de recent good beating, but I, I made it and they didn't. So I attribute that to the. Resources of my friends and my family. You hear a voice in the back of your head. Yeah, of it course comes. you do. <laughs> I know you know he's not well, but you don't know how not well he is. This is a place of death. What do you see, O oh Satan? I know that when you normally hear someone say he's already dead, it's hyperbole. I don't think it is in this case. I think he's already dead. To back up one moment, both the Idrises were heavily studying necromancy to deal with the undead problem, correct? Yes. Okay. So it isn't out of line that they might have a lot of necromantic, quote unquote, taint about them. From their it's... studies, from dealing with the undead in, in various fashion. Give me an Arcana check. Okay. Uh, 
that's a nine, so that goes to 19. Uh, your sense of their studies of necromancy is that it, it was very similar to the way that researchers will study mm -hmm. a very virulent strain of a plague in which they would poke it with a very long stick but try not to get anywhere near it. <laughs> okay, so they've, they've, care they've studied it mostly from book knowledge, not necessarily from practical experience. They, they wouldn't try. You never saw them cast any spells that were themselves necromantic. They right. were looking at it from the outside. Right, okay. Um, all right, so to return to our telepathic conversation... Um, Can you see what did this to him? That would be something that happened in the past. I don't know how long ago, but there is no sense of life in here other than you. Okay. Um, I will turn my attention back to the fervid. Um, I'm curious, sir, about your recent developments in your health. <laughs> of course uh, you are. You are a great wizard. You could do, cast, find some way to defeat that which is clearly affected. Take a look at yourself in the mirror. <laughs> I don't need to. Yeah. I know what I look like. Clearly. And like death. You're... Exactly my point, sir. What is the cause of this? Why? Why do you not seek treatment? Because the treatment won't do anything. It won't do anything. You've already gone. You've already gone too far, haven't you? I went far enough. I went as far as I needed to go. Perhaps that was too much. Nothing is too much for Kunrich. Nothing is too much for my family. They are safe that now. I, do under I understand that. Uh, recent developments in my own, of my own, have taught me something new about my own family. But there's also there's always a way to find. There's always another way. Let me put it that way. And if you've already gone past a certain point, good sir, then I wish you well in your journey, and I offer my deepest regrets. I appreciate it. I need no sympathy. I went into this eyes open. I understand. Everything has a cost. That I understand, even more so perhaps than others. God, what did he do? That's what I'm... My, my brain's going crazy. Uh, <laughs> the I, narration. I have, like, what did he do? L-I-C-H. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> he's falling a cactus that day. <laughs> no. He's, I, I have a strong suspicion. He, we're going to see Lord Fervent again somewhere. <laughs> Although mm. he'd be slightly more skeletal. And he may have a little fun thing called a phylactery. What is that? <laughs> Liches love phylacteries. <laughs> so, uh, for for those of you who are unfamiliar with how liches work in um, Dungeons and Dragons, a high level spellcaster, uh, typically a wizard, but they can be other classes as well, um, is able to create basically a container that will hold their soul. And through doing this, enter a state of undeath, where they can they basically live forever, and continue to cast spells, and continue to do their research. Now, these people tend to be incredibly evil, and self-centered, because why else would they try to do this? Right. Nothing you've seen from Fervid says that he's self-centered at all. No, but that's, and this is more the player. Ari is still kind of wondering what he's done to himself. Uh, 
but clearly he's gone too far in whatever experiments or whatever he's trying to do to assist Coomridge. And um, that's just his opinion. But um, before he leaves, Ari will give him one more parting statement and basically to say that, sir, the load does not have to handle entire or be handled upon your shoulders. You now have allies in this town. Myself, my allies, we will be glad to give you any assistance that we can. While I am not your equal in magical knowledge and power, I have friends who could help. And we will your, do our best to help Coomridge. Your assistance, yours and your friends, though that is one of the reasons why I don't regret anything. Very well. Coomridge will survive, in no small part, to your efforts. It doesn't need me anymore. But your son needs you. Your family needs you. And therefore, I say, think of them first. Sons will always need their fathers. Fathers will always be proud of their sons. They're gonna get me all misty eyed. <laughs> are, are, are we watching This Is Us or playing D and D? I know. <laughs> so I had we had to dispel the sad moment. Ari will kind of nod his head and leave the room. Um, Ardent is waiting outside, and he doesn't say anything as he closes the door again, but. There's, there's a bit of an expectant look on his face. Almost hope, but not enough to be hope. Yeah, no, Ari kind of will just shake his head, no. Uh, but I am going to, you know, kind of like, he'll nod, like, let's step away from his room before we talk. And once they get uh, 20 or 30 feet away, he'll be like, he's done something to himself. I'm not certain what. But he, he's whatever he's done, he is undertaken with willful choice. He's done it deliberately, and he knows the cost involved. And he's he's trying to, I guess, sacrifice himself for the good of the town. Which I tried to show him that look, he doesn't have to do this alone. He has help, but that did not seem to move him at all. We can all sacrifice each other. There's a, there's a voice in the back of your head again, and it says, yeah. "I, I think you're right, but I think you have your tense wrong." Yeah, well, past tense. <laughs> I, I think he might have made that sacrifice before. Yeah, long before, this, and now he's this paying is the, the payment. price. Yeah, he's made the sacrifice, and now the payment is coming due. And I'll, I'll tell that to Lord Arden. Um, it's just. I don't know what he did. Uh, he's too cagey, too clever a, a man uh, to say outright what he's done. Um, but I'm sure there's evidence of it. If you could, if you could be, if you could find it, um, I suspect. Even this now, he's trying to protect me. Yeah, exactly. He's trying to protect you from learning what he's done. Uh, the cost he felt was not too great to pay for himself but such that he felt that he had to shield it from his family, which I understand to a degree, but I, I, there's just not enough information that he's going to tell us about what happened. He feels, even perhaps to me, that he owes us some sort of protection uh, from whatever he's done to himself or, or to, to whatever he's done to help the town, whatever that was. And... I don't know he did where everything it came. to help the town. Exactly, and more probably more so than anyone else. And now that caught, now that whatever he sacrificed, that payment is coming due. And I think at this time he's simply trying to either come to peace with it, or and then perhaps perhaps protect us from any other repercussions of that price. So. You I know, he asked me to turn off the crematorium. 
Is it no longer? It is no longer needed, is it not? We don't really need it anymore, but we've been using it for a hundred years. It's tradition. If I if I tried to stop using it, the townsfolk would would rise up against me. Well, it is useful to dispose of garbage, I suppose. I mean, it is powered by his pyro face elemental. clouds at that. Yeah. You realize well, you you you. You referred to something that they use to to dispose of the bodies of their bodies, loved ones yeah. as, as well, a no. garbage disposal. <laughs> That's not what I intended. I meant more like from personal refuse. But well, uh, yeah, I, I know what you intended, but <laughs> but he's he, and he tries to take it that way. But yeah. but he his knee jerk reaction. Right. Is how dare you? It, no. Yeah, and <laughs> he he's a diplomat. He he do, he doesn't. Um, Ar- go off on you for that, but right. and Ari th- has Ari has uh, persuasion and insight, so he's kind of like, no, 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 never mind. <laughs> so you know, it's we'll move past this here. Um, at this point, I would say he's a stubborn old man, and I mean, you can agree with me on that one for sure. But he runs in the family. Well, and wizards as a whole tend to be a little stubborn about certain things. Uh, we all have our little nuances and ways we like to do things, and it. We all, especially as we get older, we get set in those ways, and so Ari, as far as I'm concerned, Lord Fervid is, he's chosen his end, and nothing will dissuade him from it. Well. And I'm glad I didn't get my hopes up. Yeah, I'm sorry. So am I. Ari will then leave his presence and perhaps then head to our the farm that he is at least co-owner of. Okay. And you are able to find uh, Meepo as well. You you followed the sound of breaking windows. <laughs> Shattering glass. Is me- where is Meepo? <laughs> <laughs> in Ellie's room, yeah. mm-hmm. they, they've, discov- they've discovered that um, once they shattered all the panes of glass uh, in, in her window, they were able to press digitate the, those bouncing balls and throw them clear across the courtyard. <laughs> Are we having fun, children? We're trying. Look how far that one went. <laughs> uh, Ellie, on the other hand, totally understands that she is in trouble because yeah. her dad is still with you. Yeah. A- and he he does not particularly look amused. And he's and like, Ari does not have the mending cantrip, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm praying right now. <laughs> yeah, we're... Meepo, come along. It is time Ellie, to leave. <laughs> Idris, you clean up this mess right now. Yes, I'm still father. crying over the <laughs> army I have. She casts a mending spell. The windows back together, and the other windows. Yes, father. She <laughs> runs out the door. Oh, sorry. Ari loves it. I, I, you know, this is the to you or you are chaos personified, and mm-hmm. he just enjoys the daylights out of it. <laughs> it's just like she is four, and she can do magical spells that I couldn't do. You know, at twenty years. <laughs> you know. She's, well, five, she's now. five now. Five yes. now. Five, yeah. I'm five now. You're yep. five now. Excellent. I'm five now. We should have a party. <laughs> Yay, a party. party. <laughs> <laughs> you guys celebrate when people turn five? Uh, what, it is common to celebrate the day of one's birth in our in our world, yes. Usually oh, it involves God. imbibing several drafts of alcohol, but I think we'll forgo that today and perhaps we can just find you a cake okay i really don't want to think about what would happen if (laughs) mipo was under the influence of something yeah no gear grinder special is bad (laughs) so let us perhaps see if we can find a baker or a confectioner in town okay the the day is kind of young so um it's quite easy to find a, a bakery they do have some cakes that are already made um that they they can 
uh, pretty up a bit with, with with frosting or whatever. Okay. Um, he'll into, Meepo, what would you like? I don't know. I've never had a cake. Let's see what choices we have or what flavors we might uh, partake of. Okay. Let, he'll let Meepo go wild. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever. Whatever is needed. Um, Ari will produce a platinum coin to the baker. <laughs> and whatever the young kobold wishes. Um, and hopefully that will be plenty. <laughs> that is a lot of cake. Platinum coin? Oh my. The, the baker Ari. throws in a wheelbarrow <laughs> to carry the cakes. <laughs> there you go. I'm I want a red one platinum. and a purple one. And I'm deducting my sparkle. platinum coin from my, from my funds. <laughs> <laughs> I and and I imagine, I imagine that before you leave the shop, some of them are different colors than when they were what they yeah. were when they were purchased. Uh huh. Yeah, and, and more sparkly. Glitter. I want all the flavors. <laughs> I want to try them all, and I want my friends to try them too. Can you oh, make that's a cake right. With Meepo a, doesn't even cake? know that 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 there's more kobolds in in Kumri. Yeah. She doesn't. She has no idea. <laughs> well, we're no gonna. Told we'll, her. We can we can head to the nearest inn from the from the bakery and share the cakes perhaps with some others there, and then we'll Yay. take a few back to the farm. Uh, I'm not sure where the temple is in relation to the farm. Uh, they, they're but... they're fairly close. Okay. Uh, they're all in the same general area where. Land was a bit cheaper due to it being a, a bit closer to wilderness area. And perhaps like the, nobody the, living there anymore. Well, <laughs> um, th those individuals are currently deceased. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. So after bakery farm, okay. if okay. Fenix is not there, we'll perhaps Ari will perhaps at least go towards the temple to go see how it's working out. Uh, if Meepo wants to tag along, that's fine. Otherwise, mm -hmm. she can stay back at the. I guess we have a house to a house to stay in at the farm, right? Or is that still um, being built? Oh no, the farm is built. Okay. The, the reason why the farm was as expensive as it was is because the buildings were already there. Right. Okay. So, um, up to Meepo what she wants to do. That's Ari's plan. Is after the after the bakery, we'll go to the farm at least make a pit stop to. Uh, kind of relax for a bit and then head over to the temple to see how Fenix is doing. Okay. And we'll bring him some cake. Yay! Fenix, how are you doing? <clears throat> it's so beautiful. <laughs> the army. All right, so you arrive and Meepo, the first thing you notice is that there's some excavations in place and some stonework that's been laid, and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's cobalt work. Mr. Fenix, what, how did, what, there's cobalts. I haven't seen cobalts like, in about a year. I'm at five sound, now, by the way. At the sound of your voice, about 12 cobalts run out of the tunnels and give you a group hug. <gasps> Yay! You, you know each of them. <laughs> I'm not going to go through their names, but you know each and every one of them. Larry, Jerry, Barry, and Ari. <laughs> How did you guys get here? What, what are you doing? All right. Well, to summarize, um, things did not go well after you left. Um, th there, there were some repercussions to the 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 servant of the great one that had been sent to them being set on fire and then promptly drowned and sent down a whirlpool oh. um yeah yeah so you the 12 that are left there were about 20 to 25 of them when you left these 12 are the last remaining ones and the, the reason why they're here is because some dwarves found them and saved them, basically. Um, somewhat reluctantly, but they were hired by um, Ardent Idris after a conversation with Ari. 
about how interesting cobalts were and that he should probably look into it. So he delegated. And here they are. And here they are. And um, there, it was already established in their clan that uh, Fenix was a great one. Mm -hmm. So it just followed that they would team up with other servants of the great one. Yeah, that works. So here they are building a temple for him. Uh-huh. Okay, guys, come, come, come have some cake. I don't know if you've had cake. Have some cake. They have never had cake before, and it is delicious. Mm -hmm. Nipa's having a great birthday. <laughs> she deserves it. <laughs> she does. She's getting killing blows. Yeah. Yes. I killed some frost giants, and I killed some... I guess they were all frost giants. I'm like telling my friends all this stuff I did while I was gone. Uh, uh, you, you, killed, you, you killed a cultist. I did. In the um, salt mines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, retroactively, you found out that that cultist happened to be a worshiper of the Great One. Oops. Well, he was yeah. trying to kill. He was trying to kill us. So. Yeah. It was him or you, and you decided it would be him. Mm -hmm. You you leave out the part where where he was a fellow follower of the Great One. You, you, you didn't. Yeah, it doesn't that. seem appropriate to, no. <laughs> to share that part. Yeah, but they they are very happy to see you. Um, they think your outfit your outfit is fantastic and very practical. Mm -hmm. Of course, all the sparklies and the and the outfit and the and the umbrella hat. I'm wearing is a scarf and the umbrella hat. Yes, yes. Meepo is a high fashion plate for. Yes. <laughs> she sets the styles. Yes. All right. Um, so you you, ha you have a great time catching up uh, and learning about all the horribleness that has happened on both ends. Mm -hmm. Um. And I'm assuming you're heading to the farm now? Or is there something else you want to do here? Nothing I need to do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could hang out with the kobolds for over long, but... They, they yeah. can't really hang out because they've got oh, work yeah, to do. They, they've got a temple okay. to build. And why aren't you helping? <coughs> farm, farm, oh, farm. I can help. Because she's apprenticed. <laughs> oh. I'm a what? She's apprenticed. What's apprenticed? Uh, you somewhat work with Ari. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The great one's daughter. She doesn't need to work. Yeah. She, she, is, she is an apprentice. Uh, you've been an apprentice before because they had a different sorcerer that was their spellcaster, and he was teaching you stuff. Oh, okay. Well, but sometimes he was a he. Also. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes he was her dad, and maybe her mom before that. She's not sure. Yeah, and it was an honorific title because you don't know which ones were actually your parents. They have right. communal eggnests, mm -hmm. but that's besides the point. Right, and um, and cobalts don't really care about gender anyway. So no, they don't. They they are gender fluid, literally. Yes. <laughs> well, wait. How many cobalts are female, and how many are male in this group she's in? <laughs> Um, they're in a and they're in a plan. That, we're we're going to say because tomorrow that answer could be different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it takes it takes they're a while for that to happen. No, no, it, it wouldn't be. Um, it takes a while for that to happen, and we're going to say that you're not going to be. I'm assuming you're not going to be living with them long enough. You you're just going to be visiting for the most part because you are an apprentice yeah. to a powerful yeah, wizard. Yeah. Um, right. for that yeah. to really matter. Okay. <laughs> I don't know about powerful, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is Meepo the o oldest cobalt? No. Okay. Not by a long shot. Good, because she doesn't really want to lead <laughs> and stay you are, here. <laughs> you are certain that you are the most powerful. Mm -hmm. But you are not the oldest. Not the oldest. Can't lead.
However, they do let you know that they, they already have a few nests. They've been here for a month, so. Um, oh, okay. G g give it some time, and there'll be more than 12. Good. You'll have a whole Good bunch job. of brothers and sisters. That'll be great. <laughs> Cobalt Army. Cobalt Army. Yep. Make some Fen more. Phoenix will die of joy. <laughs> and then and then we, we'll we'll fast forward to a scene where they've all hatched and Phoenix visits and they're all just climbing over him like in a swarm. <laughs> in the sky smelling the air. Day. He does that thing where you take the baby and you toss them up in the air and catch them. But they've got claws. So I, they they attach themselves to the ceiling and don't come back down. I <laughs> I spin, I, I, spin, I spin with a cobalt on my finger like a, like a basketball. They laugh and enjoy it. But that's that's in the future. The eggs haven't hatched yet. Okay, so you head to the farm. Mm -hmm. And as you arrive in the farm, you see uh, basically some makeshift targets that have been set up as a firing range. Um, some of them... Now, th these are like the traditional archery targets where they're made out of straw that's been wrapped in a cloth with, with a big bullseye painted on it. Um, but several of these are missing the center. And you see Akari with a very familiar bow. But from the shots he's making with it, I said Akari, you see Vex, played by Akari, with a very familiar bow. Um, and the shots he's making with it tell you that this bow's had some upgrades. Mr. Vex, have some cake. It's it's my birthday. I'm five. Oh. There, awesome. there, 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 you're still moving the, the wheelbarrow around. Um, uh -huh. There's some icing smeared to the sides. And there's some fairly large half-mushed pieces. Um, some of them with claw marks in them. And, I, and I met I met my clan, the, the, the my cobalt clan. They're they're hanging out with Mister. I'm assuming I know about the cobalt yeah. Yeah, you 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 live close he enough. Doesn't that know you, you know that. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, I'm just I don't know what I know. So um, oh, okay. yeah, um, in this case, Fennec, not Fennec, Vex is aware that the cobalt's moved in. Um, he he tried to hide this from Punk. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Punk does not right. have a happy relationship with cobalts. <laughs> Punk would rather like to have like a basketball hoop and just throw them in there. They 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 have not had a discussion on the matter. It it's it might be one of those things I was where ev for backup, really. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's one of those things where everyone knows, but if they don't talk about it, it hasn't happened. <laughs> okay. Or it might just be that Ponk was distracted by his weekly poker nights. <laughs> nights. Love it. <laughs> I'll just grab a little bit of the cake that's not covered in claws. And just nibble on it. It is delicious. <sighs> Happy birthday, love. Thank you. Oh, and it was half your caloric or your required caloric intake for the day. <laughs> <laughs> It is all sugar. It is possible they used magic to get that much sugar into that small a piece. That doesn't surprise Ari at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is a curse on Vex's family. It's called diabetes. <laughs> um... Do you have diabetes? No. Well, you do now. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> that is a Simpsons quote. You get diabetes. And you got diabetes. Everyone look under your seat. Don't touch that. You got diabetes. Oh, get diabetes. <laughs> so, fun fact my mom actually does have diabetes. So, let's move on. So does mine. So do I, actually. So I probably have diabetes. I don't know. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you're too what? young for that. <laughs> How am I too young? You don't have well, if you had the childhood onset version, maybe. That, yes, <laughs> I would hope but... your dad knew about that. 
yeah, that that's something where there would be some symptoms that would be evident at this point. Yeah. <laughs> at, the, at the age you are, yeah, I would hope so. It's called, it's called Wagalonia. I am obsessed. Well, whatever you do, don't look the symptoms up on WebMD because it will, what it'll turn out is it'll say that either you have cancer or you're pregnant. Oh. And if you are pregnant, I would like to take some photographs and talk, call the National Enquirer. And I'll, <laughs> uh, I'll, and I'll become rich. <laughs> yes. And to be... <laughs> And you'll also not be allowed to serve in the military right now. Yeah. And I'll also die, probably, because... That'd well, be let's good. move on. Yeah, this is going anyway. in weird places, guys. Welcome to Dungeons and Dragons, everyone. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. Where we digress so we... frequently and often. <laughs> we oh. change the subject from the game to real life. <laughs> well, and then regret what you, it. What do, you ta what do you say we take a short five-minute break... Yeah, to try to know. figure out where we were supposed to be in this session. Because <laughs> <laughs> everything we've done w was pretty much what I planned to do in the first half hour. <laughs> it's nine o'clock. Oh so, my, okay. Yeah, so we we'll be right back. Okay. After these messages. <laughs> like, like, every time we introduce, like, anything... Well, like, speaking of that, how is so I saw this map?
And we're back. Yay. Yay. All right. So you are at the farm and you are watching Vex put very large holes in these makeshift targets that he set up. What do you do? Oh, wait. No, we've already passed that point. Uh, you gave him some cake. Now what do you do? I would like to just keep taking practice shots. <clears throat> okay. So you I return. I want to find Shepard. I want to go Ari find wants Shepherd. to. Well, yeah. Oh, go ahead. That was it. I want to go find Shepard. If she's Shepherd going finds to you. The puppy, I'll go help her. Yeah. <laughs> you you hear barking from the other side of the farm, and there's a Doppler effect. As, as Shepard gets closer and closer and closer to you, and basically this bowls you over and starts licking your face like crazy. Um, you don't think that, uh, Vex, you don't think that much icing is good for a puppy or a full-grown wolf. <laughs> but it doesn't matter anymore <laughs> because it's it's too late. She's already eaten this bowl. Uh... I'm just going to stand looking at the abyss as I plot my... The abyss uh... looks back. Oh, jeez. Now that he has a quiet moment, Ari wants to take out the book and the strange metallic contraption that they found in the house where the little girl tried to kill uh, one of our giant friends, our Goliath friends. Are you gonna? Okay. Are, are you gonna like, cut a that. circle and then like do the Zen? Maybe we'll see. We'll see if that's necessary. <laughs> <laughs> So okay. he's going to start with the book, uh, do comprehend languages ritual on it, since it's, he knows already that it's a language he doesn't doesn't know. Um, basically, kind of look over the first uh, ten or fifteen pages. Uh, I have a funny feeling it's not going to be terribly exciting. <laughs> uh, well, it depends on how you feel about governments, because it's a it appears to be a, a collection of essays that were. Um, bound into a book after they've been published elsewhere. Uh, it it appears to be called the Federalist Papers. Oh gosh, my daughter just loves you now. <laughs> Ari will definitely read those, uh, but I, after the first couple, I'll be like, huh, okay, we'll table this for later reading. Um, and then he wants to try to perhaps do some divinations on the strange contraption that they found. Um, he's not sure what this is. Um, he'll start with detecting magic on it, and then um, I'm not sure I'm going to do an identify on it. Um, it appears to have no magical properties. Okay. Um, and his robe has already kind of given it a once-over and doesn't really recognize anything from it. So what he may do... Um, I'm not sure if I want to hold on to this or let Lord Idris look at it. Uh, um, give me an insight check. Okay. I know he's I know he's kind of distracted right now. Um, so I might just table this for later investigation. Uh, insight is rolled a 10. That goes to 14. I probably should have said investigation instead of insight, but whatever. No. Um, I had three then. <laughs> so... Um, add three to the ten, or three uh, well, more. Well, for the fourteen, I, I rolled a ten, got a fourteen for insight. Take the ten; it's a seventeen for investigation. Okay, that that makes that that makes more sense. Okay, um, so while you yourself don't have a lot of understanding of what this device is, um, it, it does smell very strongly of sulfur, uh, but it has a lot of moving parts in it. So, and it's definitely machined in nature, possibly even mass produced. Um, you can see casting marks on it. Right. There, there's a reasonable chance that if you showed it to someone skilled in engineering, that they would be able to tell you what it's designed for. Okay. Uh, then that might not be Lord Idris because he's more of a wizard. Um, how far is our town or our farm from town? Like, an hour walk. Um, 
Short walk? Less than that? A, a little less than a day. A little less than a day. Yeah, so you're, you are ending the um, impromptu birthday party oh, so it's as night. the sun's going down. Yeah, no, all right. Well, then we can do this tomorrow, but um, he'll that's his plan for tomorrow, then, is to take this strange thing into town to see if there's – I'm sure there's somebody in there who may be able to help him figure out what it is. Oh, you've got a pretty good idea of who you could take it to to figure out what it is. Good, then that's his plan. But they don't live At in least town. Tomorrow. Oh, oh, fiddle punch. Oh yes. Uh, hmm. Yeah, no, I, that's not a bed, and he's but he lives farther away, doesn't he? He does. But you, you would probably have to ritual. go into town and then go north of town because you're in the southern end of the kingdom. Right. So it's a day's journey uh, to get to the town, and then another day's journey to get up. Well, half a day's journey, roughly, to get to the tower. How uh, well he has a ritual that he could go. Uh, he has a phantom steed that would go ten miles in an hour. So would that be something? Uh, is it, is his ta tower more than that from town? Um, I don't feel like doing math at yeah. nine fourteen <laughs> on a Saturday night. So I'm going yeah. to say that would allow you to make the journey within a single day. Okay, and we'll do. We'll try that. We'll do that tomorrow. Okay. That's his. That's his end of the night. Okay. Obame, did you come to town, or are you? Uh, I'm sorry. Did you come to the farm, or did you stay in town? No, I stayed in town. Okay. All right. Dawn breaks, and this is the point where, if Eric wasn't playing this evening, I would say Obame casts mending. But he's here, so oh well. Um, Ari has a plan for today. Is there anyone else who has a plan? I usually just follow. All right. So that's two. Vex, do you continue to make big holes in little things? No, I'm not going to just continue firing arrows into the training things. Um, I'm going to... <clears throat> so... The other two have temples and followings. Yes. I had something going on with people that were converting. There, There is a temple to Syl Sylvanus in town, yes. They tend to call it a church here, but mm -hmm. there, there is a church of Sylvanus in town. I would like to go there. Okay. And Obeim, I'm assuming that you're just going to stay in town for the most part because you're already there? Correct. And Fenix, what will you be doing? Being awesome. Well, yes, but I'm asking for more details. Where do you intend to be awesome? Who will be looking upon you and basking in your awesomeness? What activities my will you be fellow, doing to, my... to assert this awesomeness? Okay, okay. Um, I will be... Seeing if anything needs to be uh, helped with on the construction. Oh, there's plenty of heavy lifting needed. Oh, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll do some heavy lifting, I guess. All right. You 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 assert your awesomeness by lifting large rocks and helping to put them in place and cross beams and all that. Uh, and you are going to make today sp um significant progress on the first floor. Nice. Uh, Yes, you you haven't put a roof over your head yet, but the walls are are taking shape, and this this is looking pretty nice. They've shown you some revised blueprints. You do shed a single tear when you see that the stained glass window is made to look like a giant wagon wheel. Oh no, no, I don't just shed a tear. I shed a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> One of the acolytes is put on mop duty. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's let's head to town. Um, Vex, the the clerics of Sylvanus are happy to see you. Um, the church that they have set up is in the middle of a park area that was already existed in town. Mm -hmm. uh, they got permission to have their structure be there. It, it is structure is a very loose word. 
Um, if you are inside it, you are shielded from the elements, from the local flora. But they're not arranged in a way where you can point at something and say, that's a wall or that's a roof. Mm -hmm. And as you talk with them, um, your life is a lot more interesting than theirs. Yeah, I'd imagine. To the point where I'm not going to go into the details for it because we're recording this for people to listen no, to. No, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I just wanted to know I actually had something. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, Obame, uh, you are made aware, uh, you actually were made aware of this earlier, uh, but it was kind of late. Uh, they, they didn't really want to bother you too much because you are, again, one of the more powerful clerics in the realm at this point. Um, so when you come in and say, I want to meditate, they're not like, oh, but wait, we have all these things we want to talk to you about first. <laughs> Usually when I go to something like that, sure, but I have no problem helping anybody out in their time of need. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. Well, it, it's kind of the opposite of what Fenix encountered, where they wanted to pester him immediately and nothing he oh, could okay. do would stop that. Um, you don't mind. And they were like, no, no, we're giving you space. <laughs> um, so like when you came up for air and, and decided to have an evening meal, that's when they let you know that um, uh, the older Lord Idris is currently dying and isn't so keen on accepting healers even though several people from this church have offered to go. Have they, uh, who am I talking to right now? Ari, or just somebody in general? Yeah, uh, you, Ari, Ari wouldn't have mentioned it to you uh, if you saw him, because he already knows that he doesn't want, the fervid doesn't want to see another cleric, so. This would be one of the um, other acolytes of Ilmater. I understand. I asked the other acolytes who has uh, has anybody from my party seen him yet? They don't know. Decisions, decisions. Um, so I know it's Lord Idris, somewhere around that specific area. So I know Ari is involved. I'm gonna go see if I can find Ari. Okay. Um, Ari, you said you're not stopping in town, though, right? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the horse ritual to head right to Fiddle Punch's tower. Okay. Can I go too? Uh, yeah, I think the horse can handle Meepo's weight, so yeah, if she wants to tag along, she's more than welcome. Okay. okay. There's a few moments where um you have to use the um umbrella hat, and, and you sort of hold on to Ari's cloak, and you sort of like can glide. <laughs> Because the horse is moving at speed. But you seem to enjoy it. Uh, so, uh, Obame, give me an investigation check. Stand by. Use an actual dice this time because those dice rolls last time were horrible. <laughs> 22. Oh, that's plenty. Uh, so you know that... Ari was in town um, and was in the keep itself as well yesterday, uh, but he left very early in the day after buying a significant amount of cake um, to spend. <laughs> that like, alone might look suspicious. <laughs> Can, yeah. I <laughs> well, Can I make you, a religion check to make you, sure that it ain't really against somebody's religious? Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> well, well, he's, <laughs> well, here's the thing. Um, you would have been able to find that information out with a much lower role because okay. <laughs> the baker's pretty much been telling everyone that they got cleared out. <laughs> um, okay, well, so uh, I actually do want to attempt to head over to... I want to see the king, the, the, um, king or Lord Deidre. Okay. Um, Ardent uh, graciously um, welcomes you. Tells you the same story that he's told Ari, um, so we don't need to repeat that. And says, you know, I, I would be thrilled if you could help, but he will not see you. 
I mean, the, the, the only blessing here is he's probably too weak to throw a bedpan at you like he did with the first one. How, uh, how bad would it be if I was to go see him anyway? I don't know. Let's check. All right. He takes you to his father's chambers. And at, outside the door, he says, the first thing he's going to ask is if it's another cleric. I can't lie to my father. Um, give me two seconds. I want to kind of, I want to, I, I broke out, um, um, my onk and I want to kind of pray to ill matter and see if he can give me some guidance on this. Okay. Um, give me a religion check. Oh, I'm good at this. <laughs> what? The cleric is good at religion? <laughs> Um, <laughs> this is a first for a while. I rolled a natural 20. Ooh. Okay. Next thing you tell me, the uh, water is wet and the sun is hot. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So let's see how I should handle this. Um, you know, if I, mean, if, if I get a sense of warning or something, you know, that he tells me this may not be a good thing to do. I kind of want to just be able to help him rely on him to give me, give me guidance. The sense that you get, you, you don't get a verbal reply. No, it's never verbal. Um, well, there was one time where it was, <laughs> yeah. it was in a dream, but, it, but it was very verbal, um, with a lot of imagery, uh, but the, the feeling that you get is Ilmater is very pleased that you have made this choice, that you are selflessly trying to help. But that your help is... You don't know if it's not needed or if it's not going to actually help. It's sort of a mix between those and you don't know which it is. So, thank you for the sentiment. Feel good about yourself because you feel this way and because you're making these choices, but it's going to be for show because this isn't going to actually help. Gotcha. Okay, well, um, I uh, tell the servant. Uh, I give him a little. Uh, There's no servant. You're talking or, to the Lord of the Key. Yeah, here. I'm the Lord of the Key. I'm just, I'm just trying to basically um, uh, give. Um, I don't have anything. I should have made something beforehand. I'm good at medicine. Something to ease his pain. I don't know how he's gonna leave if he's even having having any pain or anything like that. Okay, very good. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell him. Uh, unfortunately, my. Uh, my Lord above God has told me, unfortunately, deity has told me this may not be a good thing to do. So uh, I hope everything, wish him well, and I'll be on my way. You haven't even opened the door. <laughs> nope. No, no need. Once a deity gives me a no, it's, it's, it's okay. Ardent nods his head. Give me um, an insight check. Oh, you give me all these things I'm good at. Yes. 26. He's a little annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it it takes it takes a lot of mental energy to will himself up to go through this routine. And you didn't and he he was prepared to do this. And then at the last moment, you're like, no, I'm not going to. And intellectually, he can understand. Your God says, no, you're not going to go against that and try anyway. But there's an emotional component anyway. I understand. 
Uh, he, he doesn't try to outwardly show this, but there, there's certain cues you can pick up on, especially with that role. All right. So, moving further north, Ari and Meepo, you have arrived at the tower. Um, and the tower's getting some work done. Like, actively being worked on right now. Um, it is actually covered in a... Now, now when you were here last time and the time before that and the time before that, the tower was always a little run down. It's, it had some patchwork right. pieces. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. it, it, it didn't fare well in the zombie apocalypse scenario. Um, but a lot of that damage is already repaired and apparently some improvements are being made. Uh, there are these strange creatures... Um, that parts of them look like they're metal, parts of them look like they're organic. Um, their bodies are spherical. They have a giant singular eye in the middle of their face. Um, the, the body and the head are one. The, the head is the body. Yeah. Um, and they have spindly arms and legs coming out of the sides, and they have these... Um, they look like mechanical wings with feathers attached to them that they are using to fly around and, and do various things. That is unusual. Hmm. Mr. Ari, what, what are those? If I knew, darling, I would tell you. Give me <laughs> an Arcana check at disadvantage. Okay. Disadvantage, all right. Still plus 10 to my roll, but... Uh, so that's a 10 and a 5, so we'll take the 5 for 15. You don't have a clue. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> you, you you may have slept through that particular class. Yeah, this looks like weird transmutation magic, and I, that's not my area of expertise. All right, uh, but it is very easy for you to enter. Uh, these, these things don't seem to try to get into your way. They don't necessarily move out of your way either, but it's not too hard for you to get around them. Um, they, they are primarily focused on their tasks. And you go up the stairs and you find Fiddle Punch, and there's a bunch of them in here also. Like um, smaller? No, they're all the same size. Okay. They're, they're all roughly about Meepo's height. Uh, all right, well, once we find Fiddle Punch, I will... Oh, you find him. Okay. Good day, sir. How are you faring this fair, uh, this fine day? Honestly, I have no idea. What's wrong? You were unsure? I mean, you were unsure? They're, they're, they're helping, but I didn't ask for them. I don't control them. I have no idea what they say to each other. They, they speak a language. I don't know what it is. So you I don't mean, know what they are either. I, I appreciate new situations that are learning environments, but at the same time, I don't know what I'm supposed to learn from this. So where did they come from? I don't know. Oh, well, that's interesting. Um, maybe... Ari, maybe I can perhaps help. One one of these things comes over and hands Fiddle Punch a clipboard. He looks at it, nods, and hands it back, and it walks off again and says, I have no idea what was on that clipboard, but if I pretend I know what they're doing, they leave me alone. Um, I know a spell that will let, let me... Um understand or speak any understand any language perhaps i could cast that upon you you could learn what they're trying to do learn oh, I... who sent them or you tried that i do have means of, of figuring out motives and stuff there they are for the most part just make repairing and making improvements to the tower uh and leaving most of my inventions alone uh, they didn't leave all of them alone, but uh, they apparently, learned. well, apparently, well, when these things die, they disintegrate. 
I discovered that at least. Uh, but beyond that, they don't really talk to me or talk about anything other than their immediate tasks. Hmm. Interesting. They seem to be, at least if nothing else, repairing the tower, uh, but also improving it, perhaps? I don't know. I'm not an engineer. Um, we, you have no idea who sent them, and you don't know what they're actually communicating to one another. I I know what they're communi communicating to each other. Uh, there are things like, this is too heavy for me to lift. Will you help me with it? And they, okay, so they get another one to then lift the object or whatever they're doing. Yes, they, um, they, they're, there's no long-term thought communication going on here. It's immediate tasks only. Hmm. Well, I had come here for a bit of a puzzle myself, um, but you've presented me with one. Uh, mayhap I may be able to give you something to work on for a little while, and maybe I can help figure out what they're doing here. Oh, certainly. Uh, what do you have for me? And he will pull out the strange metallic contraption that smells of sulfur and hand it to him. And I found this in a home um, with a lot of strange books, some sort of metal cabinet. Um, and uh, we found odd looking boxes with silvery screens. Um, well, this and when was... you tap on them, they don't do anything. I tried. Yeah. Either. Yeah, we tried. Um, but this was um, hidden, I believe, in a box of some kind. And I. It oh, no, you found it in the hands of oh, right. the girl's father. The right. Sorry. Uh, I took this from the hands of the, I guess, the man or the, the father of the house. Um, so he was trying to either attack or defend himself with it. I couldn't find anything magical about it, but it smells strongly of. Well, the components one would use, say, for a fireball spell. Um, so I was intrigued, but with no magical auras, it was difficult to determine what it was supposed to do. Perhaps you could offer me some insights into it. And in the meantime, I will see if I can talk to these creatures uh, and perhaps gain some insights into why they're here and what they're doing. So um, while you were explaining this, I rolled a check for Fiddle Punch, and I got a nat 20. Yay! Um, so not only can he explain to you that it's basically a firearm, um, and he, he uses whatever language would be appropriate right. for this fantasy world uh, for that, um, but he can explain to you the, the, the caliber of the shots that would be used and possible chemical properties of whatever propellant was inside of it. Okay. So he describes bullets. Pretty right. much. <laughs> he describes how it works and he describes bullets. Does it have any of these particular things um, loaded it, within? It has some, it has the casings. It, so it's a revolver. Em right. Um, so he emptied but, but the weapon. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's why it smells funny. Yeah, that's why it smells funny. <laughs> mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, would you like to have this? I'm sure I can find a place for it. Excellent. Keep it with my regards, and uh, I'm glad I could at least uh, give you a small challenge, if nothing else. Okay. He sets it down, and then one of these creatures comes over, picks it up, and immediately starts trying to load it. With what? <laughs> Do they know you what don't it is? No. Yeah. With what? <laughs> um, all right. Well, the creature that is over here now examining the, the firearm. Uh, Ari will then begin to cast uh, tongues. And he will touch himself as the target. And this will then let him try to understand any spoken language it hears for the next hour. So he will listen to the creatures uh, to see if he can learn, uh, you know, see what they're saying to one another, uh, seeing if he can pick up any kind of hint of like is there a name they use uh, like is there some sort of pattern like do they mention something over and over again anything like that okay uh, what you gather from listening to their communication is that they are very methodical they really only speak when they need to coordinate between each other 
Okay. For example, moving something that's heavy or if uh, one of them needs to get out of the way so the other one can do a certain job or, or whatever. There's no please, there's no thank you. And there, there doesn't seem to be any creatures here that are giving the orders for the most part. Okay. Uh, Ari would then try to talk to one, uh, whatever one is. If the one is still trying to attempt to load the weapon, uh, he will talk to that one. Okay, what do you say? Uh, he will say, you'll kind of greet it. Hello, hello, creature. It does not respond. But when it discovers that it doesn't have the necessary parts to reload the weapon, it puts it down and moves off to another task. Okay. Um, he will try to find another one, basically try to greet it, uh, wave his hands at it, try to, you know, maybe get its attention somehow, either touch it or uh, somehow maybe interfere with what it's trying to do, like put a hand in its way or something like that. Try I to can get, get its attention, attention for you. I That's can okay, help. Meepo. I can help. That's okay. Yeah. Right? Just let me handle this right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, and if it, let's see what happens with that first. Let it be known okay, that the I'll DM wait. has a really what? big smile on his face that is totally involuntary. <laughs> okay, um, your attempts don't seem to do anything for these creatures. Okay. Um, is one... Uh, I, I will allow you to do another Arcana check because you okay. have spent a lot of time interacting with them at this point, even though they're not really acknowledging your presence that much. Right, right. Um... I have another spell in mind after this, so. All right, uh, so that's a 16 on the die, which is then gonna go to 26. And it, it still needs to be a disadvantage. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, I should have said eight. that. <laughs> so that? 16 and 18, 16 and 18 with the disadvantage. Okay, so. Uh, so um, 26. <laughs> okay, so um, you have now, this wasn't a primary area of focus when you were in school, uh, but no. you did learn about extraplanar creatures, and there is a plane um, that is ruled by uh, a being called Mechanus. Yeah, I I knew when you described them, but I had to try to figure a way to get in there, get it yes. in the game. The the plane of law. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and he We've has some... he has a lot of servants that are referred to as Modrons. Um, yeah. You you don't know a whole bunch about Modrons, but they, um, the lower level ones are, are only following orders. That's what they do. Right. Hi higher level ones will have some autonomy. And that's the one I want to find. Uh, at this point. Um. All the ones he sees are all Modrons here. Uh, they, they would be um, metagaming their monodrones, um, but the, right. the name of the entire species is Modron. <laughs> Modrons, right, yeah. Um, he doesn't see then, like, just inside the tower, at least for right now, there's no other differences uh, between any of them. Pretty much all look the same. Yes. Right? Okay. They all so came off the same assembly line. Right. Literally. Um, so I will turn back to Fiddle Punch, um, and, okay, um, well, I think I know what they are. Um, have you tried any sort of telepathic communications on them? Uh, telepathy is not one of my strong suits. I'm fairly uh, good at languages and taking things apart. I have not tried to take these apart because I'm afraid they would try to take me apart, so when they get hurt, they're not disintegrating. I think they're being returned to their plane of existence, uh, Mechanus, or, or something to that effect. So they're extra planar, I believe. That being said, uh, I know a, a rather low-level spell that could help me penetrate their mind and perhaps learn what they're thinking, uh, maybe even learn who sent them, but that's that might be a bit of a stretch. I suspect these are really just minions doing a job. Although who sent them to do this job 
they may not even know. Someone above them may be in charge. They have an intellect of four. Uh, so long as their if their intelligence is three or lower, the spell will fail. <laughs> so at okay. four, it still works. <laughs> there's there's just <laughs> enough room in that empty orb of a head for you to fit your mind in there. Right. Um, so that's what we're gonna. I said it. I don't know what this will do. Uh, it may agitate them uh, because ten, ten tech people who have their minds read tend to get a little upset. Uh, if you don't think that's, I mean, given the number of creatures here, uh, if I do that and they do become upset, that could end very badly. If you don't think it's a wise action, I will forbear and I will leave you to them with this additional knowledge that I have gained. Well, you remember the whole incident with the train? I do. I'm a coward. Very well, then. I will not disturb their functions. That said, they're extra planar. So someone, or somehow they got sent here or crossed a barrier to, 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 get, to get to here. I'm not sure where, where, who sent them or what their motive is other than to fix the tower. Um, Marwood actually died, did he not? Because this was Marwood's tower. Uh, he disappeared. He disappeared? Yes. Key, he, key thing to note, he disappeared. Yes. Uh, he, he was very senile, but he was still a very powerful wizard. And when the zombies attacked the tower, something happened, and a body was he never lit. found. He lit out. Okay. He could have teleported away. He could have teleported some randomly. He could have gone he planar might, traveling. He might have gone planar traveling. He might have gone to a beach and, and conjured up a, a frilly drink with an umbrella in it. You have no idea. Okay. Yeah. All right. So... My working theory is then, and I will tell this to Fiddlepunch, my working theory is that somehow these may have been sent by Marwood. He knew the tower was going to likely be damaged and may have been able to see it from wherever he's at now. And perhaps he has garnered the services of these creatures to help rebuild his home. I like that as an idea because it would mean that Marwood is still okay. It could also... It could also be because of that, and he points over to the, the the focus that you recovered from the Abolith Lair in the salt mines. Right. Could they? Could that be attracting them here? You think? Well, you did say extra planar, and yes. this thing has to do with planar magic. Uh, of course. So, uh, speaking of that, I believe now that you bring that up, I believe that house where I took that particular contraption from was also extra planar. I believe that how the entire domicile slipped through some sort of dimensional barrier and arrived here. I, I, didn't it fall? It looked like it was like half open. It, it was mostly intact. Most of the damage to it looked like it had been done by the, the blights that were Out attacking there. it. But it was oh, yeah. it was not sitting on a foundation. It was leaning right. to the side a bit. Leaning to the side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So somehow it. I believe this. The, the area. The ha the house or the, s the structure that I found this weapon in, I believe somehow has was transported across another barrier or across dimensions, from wherever it was to ours. So whatever is happening here is now being able to transport entire homes, or at least several cubic feet of matter. I'm not too surprised. Remember, it wiped out an entire town. Yeah. Well, uh, oh, uh, speaking of speaking of the focus, is, uh, actually, we've, we did we tell him that we lost one? Did he know? Um, we teleported back yeah, to his yeah. place. Yeah, you, you okay. did tell him that, that um, now you didn't know her name was Thava at the time. Yeah. You still don't right. technically know that her name is Thava. That's just what she no, was called. No, but that's one of her aliases. Um, and it might be something she reuses. So we want to impart that information now to Fiddle Punch. So I oh, yeah, you, you told him that the last time you were here. Yeah, right. he, okay. he does so, know about that. Okay, so uh, Thava has at least 
she's acquired some sort of uh, blimp, dirigible, uh, and is now using it. It's made out of adamantine. And she is currently, I guess, using it to go wherever she needs to go. She had infiltrated my mother's uh, business uh, structures and formed a relationship with the dwarves and managed to abscond with several pounds of adamantine and make this blimp. And now it's who knows doing what with it. But she is. I also... don't think she made that blimp. No. Well, that sounds like did. gnomish work. Uh, oh yes, I'm sorry. It is gnomish work. Uh, I met the uh, I met the creator actually. <laughs> Forgot about that. Uh, but she now has access to this blimp and is using it. And I'm getting bored, so I'm gonna go follow around one of these big shiny circles. Okay. Yeah. Ari has to, Ari has now gotten his. <laughs> His groove on, completely forgotten about Meepo. <laughs> <laughs> and Meepo noticed, so she's going to go follow her. I'm going to be. Yeah. He's got a mystery on his hands, and he's just uh -huh. like, yeah, 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 whatever. Leave me alone. <laughs> so, 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 wait, 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 Mr. Ari, if these big, round, shiny things came from the same place that <laughs> the house did, then then I, I wonder what they would do with these. And I take out the spoons that I took from the house that are different from the spoons here. They See totally they ignore do. the spoons. Oh, Okay. Put them back. Well, no, Meepo, I think they came from, there's a number of different planes, a uh, number of different places that exist in this universe, in this world. And the house came from one. These creatures came from another. Uh, oh. They're attracted okay. to the to the focus that we brought here. It explains mm -hmm. some, but not all of their behavior. Why are they building, I mean, unless that's just their nature. I don't know. I'm going to follow one around and see what it is. Okay. Do that. Do that. Mm -hmm. Um, Give me a perception check. Me? Both of you. Okay. Sight face? Yes. I've rolled a 19. And As perception is a plus one, so I have a 20. And I rolled a 19 and 11, so that's a 19 for me. And my perception total is four, so that goes to 23. Okay. Something flies past the window. Ooh, it is what was something that? big. It is something moving very fast. And is something that um as it goes past, a few of these creatures fall from the sky and there's a clatter on the ground below. And you're several floors up, so it it's a bit right. of a distance that they fall. Um most of it you don't catch, even with that roll, uh, because of the speed that's moving. But you do manage to see a long, spiky tail. It's white. And at the end of it is a nasty-looking stinger. Yeah. Well, and that's that? where we're going to end it tonight. <laughs> Okay. okay, that's a good spot to end. Wow, yeah. that, that nasty stinger, though. <laughs> the, the, the size of this thing is, I would categorize it as large. Mm, okay. In D&D &D terms. So, 10 foot by 10 foot. <laughs> <laughs> not Ari size. Yeah. Definitely not Lupo not, size. Not Fennec yeah. size. All right. All right. Interesting.